Greetings everyone and welcome to Brick Cats. For this installment of Rewind, I'm going to take another look at Inther and Brick Vault's B-Wing Starfighter. In the time since I did a full review on this model, parts availability might have changed, Pick a Brick has definitely gotten better, and the parts list themselves might have changed. As a reminder, you can use my discount code CATS15 for 15% off an order on Brick Vault's website, so be sure to take advantage of that if you're interested. I do receive a small amount of compensation when you use my code, and this is an amazing way to support the channel while taking a bit of a bite out of the price of the instructions. I still love the B-Wing for its unique shape, the vertical orientation, and this model is a really great build experience as most of Inthert's models tend to be. I reviewed this in November of 2020, and the B-Wing review was video number 2 on my channel. I am not going to link to it because it was just so bad. Seriously, don't watch it. Without any substitutions for the ship and stand, Bricklink gave me 8 stores and $252 without shipping and tax, or about $316 with shipping and tax. Brickvault has made parts lists available without a purchase, so huge thanks to Brickvault for giving us access to those, and the substitu substitutions I made for my pricing research were as follows. The hinge brick 1x2 top plate, part 3938 in reddish brown, is very rare, and this goes on the starboard hull and is supposed to be uh, an exposed detail right here. You can substitute basically anything for this, but a neutral color like dark bluish gray or black works best so it doesn't stand out too much. The plate 1x1 in sand blue, part 3023, is very rare. Substitute medium blue or bright light blue if you want the blue color. Otherwise, dark tan, light bluish gray, dark bluish gray would all work. And this is just a small color accent right here. You can see I use, I think that's medium blue right there. I changed all of the modified plates with U-clips to the newer and more common O-clip variant. The prices tend to be about the same or similar, but the U-clip variants are less common, and this can contribute to your store count. And functionally, they should not make a difference. The Slope 75 2x2x3 undetermined type, part 3684 in light bluish gray and dark bluish gray, make up the wow shadow, make up the trailing edge of the hull right here. I think when I was doing this, I used the 1x2x3 undetermined type with the hollow stud. But anyway, I changed this to the hollow stud version, part 364A, 3684A, excuse me. And this is because the hollow stud version is more common on Bricklink. The Technic Cam in light gray, part 6575, is most common in dark bluish gray. And these are used for the hinge assembly. You can see them right here next to this wheel right there. In my opinion, it doesn't look significantly worse in dark bluish gray, and these cams can be very expensive in light gray. So if you happen to get cheap ones in your algorithm results, that's great. If they're over 50 cents or so, I would try and substitute in dark bluish gray, and it might be worth it anyway to see how it affects your store count. The Technic Pin Connector Round 2L without slot, Pin Joiner Round, part 75535 in dark bluish gray, is an older element and is pretty rare. I recommend changing this to the slotted version in pearl dark gray, part 62462. And these are used in the wing cannons. I think I substituted light bluish gray right here. And our old friend, the wheel spoked 2x2 with pinhole, part 30155 in light bluish gray, should be changed to light gray. These are used in the wing hinge assembly right here. I believe there's two on either side but you really can't see them, and light gray works just fine. Unfortunately, there's no great substitute for the 8x3x2 open wedges, but if you're okay with a little bit of color inconsistency or want to make your B-Wing unique, there are a couple of reasonable color substitutions you can make, and the wedges are right here. The most obvious candidates would be dark tan, dark blue, orange to match the circle markings, dark red, sand green, or you might even get lucky with dark bluish gray. If you go with light bluish gray, these are likely to be the most expensive pieces in the model, so it's worth shopping around. But honestly, it's probably time for Brick Vault and or Inther to take a look at this and come up with some part substitutions that use more common elements. Sadly, with substitutions, you wouldn't get this nice smooth curve, um, but I kind of feel like at this point there are a bunch of pieces that might be usable, and you could probably do a lot worse than just doing some curved slope deals with 1x4s or 1x3s or something like that. So with all these substitutions, I got 5 stores and $162 without shipping and tax, 
which is about one, uh, $202 with shipping and tax, and that cuts a whole $114 off the original price. By maximizing my use of picker brick, my picker brick total was $131, and BrickLink, 5 stores, $83 without shipping and tax, or about $103 with shipping and tax, and that's about $234 total, or $82 less than the original. So, slightly less great savings with Pick or Brick, and I think this is because a lot of the pieces you can get from Pick or Brick aren't that expensive on BrickLink anyways. Indeed, I was pleasantly surprised at the prices for a lot of the elements that are normally marked up on BrickLink when I looked through the shopping carts. This model doesn't require too many of the elements that are normally significantly more expensive on BrickLink, like tiles and wedges, uh, just because this, the main sections are mostly brick-built construction. Thanks as always for watching this episode of Rewind, featuring Inther and BrickVault's Beaming Starfighter. If you've built this model, you have something to share that I left out, or have a question about something I didn't cover, please leave them below in the comments. Remember to leave the video a like, subscribe to the channel, or follow me on Instagram if you haven't already. Last and certainly not least, I'd like to thank Pixel Dan for this great little animation you'll see at the end here. I'm going to use this as my closing screen going forward, and this is far beyond anything I would be able to do for myself. So thank you again, Pixel Dan, and I hope to see you all back next time.